Hello, this is Alex at the Stadium in Bay City, Michigan. Today we will be looking at two versions of the same commander deck for Temet Vizier of Noctamun. One of these versions is a budget version and the other is a non-budget version. This video is for the non-budget version. If you are looking for the budget version, please click on the annotation on the screen. Okay, you're still with me. That's good. Let's jump into the deck. So, we've got Temet Vizier of Noctamun, who is our commander. He's a blue-white creature from Amonkhet. He uh, makes token. Well, he can choose a token at the beginning of combat and make give it plus one plus one and make it so it cannot be blocked this turn, which is um, obviously a very strong effect depending on what we're pushing through. And he himself also has Embalm, so um, technically he can um, be a token himself, and uh, he can make himself unblockable. So that's uh, one route that people can go, is a little bit of a Voltron control style with him. But um, that's not what we're doing. We are going um, all out with Giant Eldrazi uh, in this version. Um, the uh, the embalm is still nice because it makes it so we cast them from the command zone less frequently. So um, it, it can, uh, as people maybe try to kill him, as he is a core utility part of the deck, people will want him dead quite often. Uh, as people do kill him, we will not be having to pay such outrageous amounts of mana to recast him for, say, the fifth time. So here we are with some Eldrazi. Um, obviously, we've got Eldrazi Titans in here. We've got all of them that are legal in the format. So, uh, no um, Emrakul the Aeon's Torn, because she is banned. But uh, we've got Emrakul the Promised End. Um, she, while well, her, um, her cost reduction ability is uh, relevant in the deck, we do have some interesting, um, some interesting uh, card types, and I will explain that as we go through, but the Mind Slaver effect is actually uh, really strong in Commander. <sighs> Excuse me, had to take a drink. Uh, it's really strong in Commander um, because there's so many combo and synergy oriented things in the format. Um, I've actually used Emrakul in my Captain Cisse deck to grab it whenever I want to, and I've actually comboed out with someone else's deck to kill everyone but me. Uh, so that was very exciting. I don't foresee that happening uh, with this deck. I mean, it's possible, but it's not likely, because uh, it's a lot harder to straight up just search for Emrakul. But big flying trample protection from instance um, this is a huge threat, and if we can make it, I mean, flying a trample, you know, unblockable helps. It's not, you know, always required, but it is good. Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. Um, when you cast Ulamog the Infinite Gyre, destroy target permanent. It's indestructible, it has Annihilator 4, and if it gets milled, uh, well, if it goes to the graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle your graveyard into your library, and it's a 10 10. So he is really good <laughs> um he just kills a bunch of stuff and short of exile effects he uh will never really go away um so he's he's really good he's something that uh we're really happy to cheat into play as there are as you will see there are a couple of ways to cheat some cards into play in the deck uh and uh so he's one of our best creatures will among the ceases hunger Similar concept, kills people a bit differently. Um, let's say someone gained infinite life. We have a different way to kill them with him. Also, uh, he um, can target two permanents instead of the one that the infinite gyre can, and it exiles them instead, so that's useful. Um, Consulek, Butcher of Truth. One thing that this deck can sometimes struggle to do is draw cards, which sounds weird in a blue deck, but it's a really, really creature-oriented deck. Um, we do make a lot of big mana, as you might imagine, stuff, uh, so we do have some ways to draw a ton of cards, but, uh, Kozilek is, you know, drawing good amount of cards attached to a 12-12 Annihilator 4 body. 
cause like the great distortion uh he really likes to draw us cards and he adds um another control element to the deck and he can protect the rest of the board really well which is obviously something we really need to do as we are trying to push through with um just a handful of really strong creatures on to some other eldrazi uh, we've got bane of balaged which is an uncommon from Battle for Zendikar. It's seven mana, so it's not. It's still a good amount of mana, but it's not quite uh, Eldrazi Titan levels. Um, it can still be searched for with Conduit of Rune, which is, of course, the next card up here. But when it's Bane of Balaged has pseudo Annihilator, but better because it's exiling. So um, and it's a, got a pretty decently sized attacking body, and making copies of that guy is pretty useful. Um, we're not normally making copies of our Eldrazi Titans because, well, they're legendary. Um, but uh, we can just to push through with unblockable ones, but a lot of them have evasion of some sort built in. Conduit of Ruin is, um, does a lot of things. It ramps us in a way uh, with the first creature spell costing less. But more specifically, it tutors for whatever big, dumb Eldrazi we really want to have at that time. Um, it's really nice if you can go turn 6 Conduit of Ruin. You can frequently curve straight into Void Winnerer, uh, because uh, Void Winnerer is 9 mana. Conduit of Ruin reduces it down by 2, uh, so that's down to 7. And then uh, you can play your 7th mana source as well on the next turn. So... That is a really, really strong synergy that people will struggle to deal with if they don't have the removal ready. Breaker of Armies is, um, he's big, and he lures. So, <laughs> when we're playing a bunch of other big creatures, we don't really want people chump blocking our big creatures. So, if we can get everything to block Breaker of Armies, then he does his job, he, I mean, he's a 10-8, so, you know, obviously we want him to connect. But if he doesn't, that's not the end of the world. He's probably going to kill a lot of creatures just by attacking. Void Winnerer, as I mentioned, you can search for with Conduit of Ruin. It's a great interaction there. But uh, your opponents can't cast spells with even converted mana costs, and your opponents can't block with creatures with even converted mana costs. And it's an 11-9. So it's enormous, and it shuts down a lot of... Um, a lot of the best removal is on, wait, no, even, sorry, can't even, <laughs> sorry, crossed, crossed the uh, beams of my head. Um, so, so board wipes, however, um, so still removal, actually, a lot, of the, a lot of the best board wipes are at four mana, and board wipes are, in some ways, a big problem for the deck. Obviously, some of the Eldrazi Titans have Indestructible, they're not afraid of board wipes, but um, a lot of the other creatures are. And then also, um, counter spells are a problem for the deck, uh, and a lot of most counter spells are at, at least most good counter spells are at two mana. Um, and then making it so people can't block with stuff is just gravy. It that betrays is uh, we have a lot of annihilator in the deck, or at least a good amount. So it that betrays allows us to steal people's permanents instead of just them sacrificing them and it's a big body and making token copies of him is really good because then we get even more annihilator ulamonk's crusher again annihilator he does attack each turn of fable so it can make some strategic options a little awkward but um he's an 8-8 for 8 which you know is is okay as far as um paying for stuff goes but the Annihilator helps a ton. The Artisan of Kozilek is uh, it's, it's a, a, absolutely a staple of the format. Um, this is in a lot of non-Eldrazi decks. And uh, it reanimates a creature, it uh, has Annihilator, and it's massive. It does so many things that we want it to do. And um, unfortunately, it's, it's a little bit of a non-bow with the, some of the Eldrazi Titans that shuffle back the graveyard. But uh, we're okay with that overall, um, because it's just such a good card anyways. Eldrazi Displacer is um, our first really utility creature we run into in this deck. Uh, it's obviously not large, like everything else has been. But um, you can 
blink creatures tapped. So it can help with pushing through um, with extra damage. It can get rid of um, certain... Um, certain problem abilities on your opponent's creatures. It can, uh, in some of our cards, do have Enter the Battlefield triggers, so you can abuse some of that. Also, it uh, its best purpose, actually, in the deck is to save your guys from removal because you can just blink them in response to targeting. Extricator of Sin. Not an Eldrazi on the front. Becomes an Eldrazi on the back. So, when he enters the battlefield, he may sacrifice another permanent, which, uh, really, if we, if we do, I don't know entirely what we'd be sacrificing. Most of our threats are pretty dense here. Maybe some mana rocks late in the game. Maybe a land to help with delirium count. Um, actually, the land is probably the most likely thing, depending on what we're looking at. Um, but, uh, so if you do, you do get to make a token, which um, has some slightly nice synergy with Temet. And then if you have four or more card types in your graveyard, you do get to transform him into Extricator of Flesh, which is a slightly better creature <laughs> in that uh, he gives all of your Eldrazi vigilance. So we're already playing a bunch of big Eldrazi, and uh, we're being pretty aggressive with those Eldrazi, actually. But um, they allow them to stay back as basically an impenetrable wall of enormous creatures, which is important. And then you can still make more... Um, tokens occasionally, uh, but you have to sacrifice a non-Eldrazi creature, which we aren't playing a whole lot of. So, um, really, the most common sacrifice for that, if you do need to activate it, is probably our commander. And then the uh, last of the Eldrazi that we have... Um, are Gisela the Broken Blade and Bruna the Fading Light, not Eldrazi's on the front, um, but they are both respectable creatures on their own without being Eldrazi. Um, Gisela is flying First Strike Lifelink as a 4-3. It can block and kill a lot of big scary things. Um, so, and it gains you life. It helps keep us alive. People are going to be gunning for you once they see the amount of Eldrazi that are going on in this deck. So, Lifelink is very relevant. Um, however, at the beginning of your end step, if you both own and control Gisela and Bruna, then you get to meld them into Brizella, which we'll, I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, Bruna, when you cast her, it's important that it's cast, you may return target angel or human creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, we do have a couple of humans in here, um, so you can target a human, but usually you're actually targeting Gisela. Um, and then it's 5-7 Flying Vigilance, so it's got a butt, it's got evasion, it's okay. But Brazella Voice of Nightmares is one of the best creatures you can possibly have in the format. Um, so it's a 9-10 Flying First Strike Vigilance Lifelink, which already is amazing. It's an Eldrazi, so that's good for us. It's a flavor win, and amongst other things. And your opponents can't cast spells with converted mana cost 3 or less. So, basically all non-board wipe removal is out of the window. And you can just start crushing people with this. It's great. Now, we have a lot of copy effects to make token copies of our Eldrazi. And that is why we are playing Temet. So... Um, the first up doesn't normally enter as a token, Vizier of Many Faces, so you have, it's, it's clone, it's clone, but it also has Embalm, so after you clone something once and then it dies or whatever, uh, you can Embalm it for five to clone something again, but as a token, ah, yeah, so, um, it does generate a token copy eventually but it's, it's such a great card. <laughs> Cackling Counterpart. We get to uh, make multiple token copies of things um, at multiple times. It's pretty great. And it's an instant. That's also awesome. Rate of Replication. Um, one of the staple cards of the format, really. Uh, you can pay nine mana if you want to make five copies of a thing. Imagine 
making five copies of Artisan of Kozilek, just as an example. It's incredible. Um, Tempt with Reflections. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to put this card in here or not, um, but I wound up going with it because of something that you'll actually see later on. Um, we are going to be able to choose make choices that just don't matter for the opponent. It, yeah, they can get one of your enormous Eldrazi's if they want, but then they're going to give you even more. And uh, I'll explain when I get to that one card of why this deck, this card is in this deck. Stolen Identity, it's repeatable, it's great. We're attacking with our creatures a lot and they should be connecting a lot, so Cypher is great. Clone Legion. Uh, so you can, it's, this one's actually one of the more flexible ones. You can clone your own battlefield, which is good. Um, but sometimes uh, we want to clone our opponent's battlefield too, because it uh, because it's so symmetrical. It gives us it's a great defensive option against um, wider boards that are um, smaller board state in terms of sheer number of creatures often won't be able to deal with. Mimic that. Um, hey, what's what's better than pumping out Eldrazi Titans every turn, right? <laughs> um, Blade of Cells, the equipped creature gets Myriad, so if we attack with, say, um, let's say we attack with a, uh, just anything big, they're going to attack each player and it's going to be great. Um, if the, some, some of the things that we do have that are, that have entered the battlefield effect, we can abuse those, but those are pretty few and far between. Um, we're really going to like this is another card that interacts well with the card that I mentioned is going to be coming up followed footsteps just constantly making giant dudes it's great mirror pool we can copy um, our effects that make tokens so um, the best thing that we're usually going to want to copy with this is going to be um, is going to be right of replication but we might like something else that'll come up, and I'll point it out when we get to it. Um, as for making creatures, that's pretty straightforward. So we've got removal package in here. We've got Angel of Sanctions in here because it's an O-ring that flies, and <laughs> it uh, also embalms. So it makes a token copy um, that uh, works well with Temet. Uh, Swords Plowshares arguably the best spot removal for creatures in the format. Exiles it. Yeah, they gain life, but we, we don't care. We're hitting them pretty damn hard. Path to Exile, they ramp, but we don't care. <laughs> uh, Imprisoned in the Moon is wonderful. I love this card. Um, what's great about it is you can throw it on people's commanders, and then it's just, congratulations, you have a waste. You um, They don't get to put it back in their command zone, they don't get to do anything with their commander, it loses all its abilities and everything, it just wastes. And that is what makes Imprisoned in the Moon so amazing. Um, yes, it hits lands, so um, we could hit uh, things like Maze of Ith if they're amazing, our big guy that we're trying to connect with. We could hit um, Cabal Coffers if they're doing that, or you know, all sorts of utility lands. Planeswalkers are nice, but uh, usually we don't have a problem. We shouldn't have a problem with uh, killing planeswalkers. Return to Dust um, is just great artifact and enchantment removal. Um, we get to hit their stuff and not ours, and uh, it's very flexible. So we've got a suite of board wipes. Cyclonic Rift, I think, is probably the. I still think it's the best spell in the format. If you're playing blue and you're not playing Cyclonic Rift, you are playing Commander wrong. Um, the Overload is amazing. <laughs> it's just so amazing. Supreme Verdict can't be countered. Um, sometimes we're going to be in a pinch and we're going to want to just destroy everything. Same with Wrath of God. Um, usually we're not terribly excited about destroying our creatures, but if we have um, Eldrazi Titans out that are indestructible, then they obviously don't die to this unless uh, there's some intervention from the opponent. Uh, same concept with Austere Command, although it's more flexible in that 
Uh, we can destroy smaller creatures easier. We can destroy artifacts. We can destroy enchantments. Um, I mean, and if we need to really kill the rest of the board, we can also destroy bigger creatures too. Uh, All is Dust is outstanding. It is our first tribal card we've run into in this deck. I don't actually remember with I don't have the deck list in front of me if it's the only tribal card uh, in this version I know there are more in the budget version I don't remember if the other one made it into the list um, but that helps with Emrakul's uh, cost reduction that helps with um, the delirium on our uh, white creature and then uh, we've got a little bit more removal we've got Oblivion Ring just to help um, exile its uh, catch-all it deals with a lot of things. Um, and then we've got a couple of lands that are going to help um, with problem lands that our opponents are playing. Um, so the reason I wanted to play both Ghost Quarter and Strip Mine was I wanted to be able to um, play lands that I could sacrifice with a lot of benefit without slowing down the mana base. So that that's because of the delirium, um, the the small amount of cards that do care about the card types in the graveyard. So we've got obviously a lot of ramp in a deck like this. We're playing Soul Ring, Azorius Signet, Mindstone, Talisman of Progress, Thought Vessel. They all make sense. They're all cheap. They're all two or less mana, and they are very good at what they do. Uh, we're also playing Hedron Archive, uh, two Mindstones stapled together. Um, again, it just makes sense. And it's also um, flavor-wise um, right up there because it has to do with Eldrazi. Uh, Gilded Lotus is just a big ramp card if we don't have anything we're really doing with 5 mana. Um, it also helps with some of the um, more color intensive cards that uh, we will get to in some of our other utility. But uh, it shouldn't really be a problem fixing your colors, but we do play an amount of lands that do produce colorless for the Eldrazi abilities and things like that, so having that is useful. Calciform Pools is a storage land, and I love the storage lands. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, turns where maybe we're not going to use quite all of our mana, we're not curving out every time, so having the storage land is useful, and also it allows us to, um, if we get some of the slower, more awkward starts that the deck sometimes can have, if uh, your mulligans are not kind, um, then allows us to still ramp through just that. Terrain Generator also allows us to ramp through a land, and Ayavugan is obviously great. Um, keep in mind that it also lowers the cost of your tribal Eldrazi spells, such as All This Dust, and also you get to search for basically any Eldrazi you want if you want to use it, so that's good. So here's um, a bunch of the other miscellaneous utility in the deck. Uh, we've got Teferi, Mage of Zalfir. He is a human, so he can be uh, reanimated with Bruna. He's got Flash. He's, uh, like I said, some of the more uh, color-intensive spells, uh, Teferi being one of them. Omniscience also on this slide. Um, and then creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield have Flash. So we can start flashing in all our Eldrazi, and he's pretty great, and uh, each opponent can cast spells only any time he or she can cast a sorcery, meaning they can't counter our spells, they can't really interact with a lot of stuff, um, but we still can cast stuff at instant speed, so that's useful. Show and tell. This is one of the best cards in the deck, because it allows us to go turn one Soul Ring, turn two show and tell, into Kozilek or whatever. Just anything enormous, and then if they don't have Path to Exile or anything like that, then we get to just absolutely kill people. Yay! Quicksilver Amulet, another way to cheat cards into play. Obviously not as uh, fast as Show and Tell. However, it is repeatable and uh, certainly less all-in, uh, which is good. And we can do that one at instant speed. That's also great. Omniscience, we... Uh, we have a lot of expensive spells, so the idea that we could play an enchantment, uh, or we can even show and tell in the enchantment if we get really lucky. Um, the So we could play an enchantment to just play everything for free is pretty great. Mirror Gallery. This is my favorite card in the deck. Um, <laughs> it says the legend rule doesn't apply. So remember when I said we could make five copies of stuff with Rite of Replication or opponents could choose to 
take the tempting offer on 10th with Reflections and we'd be super happy with it. Mirror Gallery is why. Because we can go, okay, we are going to make a bunch of copies of our Eldrazi Titans, which are um, certainly the best creatures in the deck on their own, but being able to have multiple of them is incredible. Eldrazi Conscription. That's right, th this is the other tribal card. So, um, Eldrazi Conscription allows us to turn anything into big scary creature including our big scary creatures they can become even bigger and even scarier so keep in mind that temet only gets to make one token unblockable each turn so if we're gonna guaranteed connect with one creature anyways why not make that creature even better so that's um a lot of times what we'll probably be casting an aldrazi conscription on but uh it does enable temet himself to hit for 12 um so it is an option for um, alternate kill uh, by commander damage. Land tax just helps fix our mana, um, which uh, this is a deck that we cannot afford to not hit our land drops. So, um, and a lot of our ramp is not land based. The only actual land that's putting, excuse me, the only card that's putting more lands into play is terrain generator. So, um, We've got a lot of mana rocks and things of that nature for ramp. So even if we're ahead mana wise, we might not be ahead land wise. So land tax should be uh, triggering pretty often. Um, Enlightened Tutor, Mystical Tutor, they just help us grab our cards. Um, Enlightened Tutor grabs um, so many things. <laughs> it grabs uh, a lot of mana rocks. It grabs Mirror Gallery. It grabs Omniscience. It grabs um, other utility enchantments such as. Imprisoned of the Moon, Mystical Tutor, um, it can help by grabbing um, Show and Tell, it can grab any of our cop, well not any, but a lot of our copy effects. Coast from the Blind Eternities, the best removal against a lot of our Eldrazi's is Exile Effects, so Coax will be able to grab them from Exile. Um, you, If you play with a group that does the, uh, the um, Wish sideboard, for commander then obviously you can have some additional options as well keep in mind that tribal cards are also eldrazi cards it doesn't say eldrazi creature card so you can grab those um, i do not play with that so i will only be using it for exile we've got a couple of card draw spells uh brainstorm it's just it's just really really easy to help fix our early game with it ponder um Overall, I actually like better than Brainstorm in this deck because it's not really playing fetches or anything like that. Not a whole lot of shuffle effects. So um, it allows me to essentially look at four cards if I need to. Interpret the signs. Um, we're playing a lot of high mana cost creatures. So while this is six mana for a draw spell, we can draw a ton of cards. And also, even just then, Scry 3, let's say we whiff. Well, okay, at least we... Uh, at least we get rid of some cards that we don't need, such as lands. Um, Sphinx's Revelation is great in any big mana deck, and we are certainly a big mana deck. Avacyn Angel of Hope uh, just gives the rest of our stuff indestructible, makes our board wipes more appealing. She has Flying Vigilance herself. She's great. And then uh, we do have a few counter spells. So we have Arcane Denial. Um, we're sort of a combo deck in a way, so that's why we play that over um, counter spells. That and the idea of uh, having double blue might not always be the easiest thing when we're playing uh, an amount of colorless lands as well. Um, so we'll use double blue early. Uh, but because we are essentially a combo deck, uh, we are super happy with um, our interaction replacing itself in our hand, even if it means our opponent gets to draw more cards. Um, negate. Just again, because we are a combo deck, we are happy to counter a wide variety of non-creature spells. Creatures themselves shouldn't be a problem overall, because our creatures should just be better. Not of this world, it's a lot of mana for <laughs> a counter spell, but um, a lot of times it's going to just be free to cast. That is our third tribal card. We've got some uh, utility lands here. We've got Arcane Lighthouse, um, makes some of our... Uh, abilities, for example, um, 
from Eldrazi Displacer. It makes it so we can target some problem things. Um, it makes our removal better, and it taps for colorless. So it does a lot of things we like. Eldrazi Temple, um, again, taps for colorless. In a way, it sort of ramps. Gary Reach Sanitarium, uh, we have trouble um, with running out of gas at some point uh, it, with some hands. And so this helps us just work through that as we, uh, if we draw dead cards such as lands when we no longer need them. Um, Reliquary Tower, there are some things that make us draw a ton of cards. So it might be effects from opponents even. Um, but uh, So we're happy to have that. It enters untapped. It taps for colorless. And then uh, we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, islands, seven planes, and then various other lands that tap for um, for blue and white. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that Mystic Gate does also tap for colorless, and so does Darker Wastes, making them essentially tricolor lands in our deck um, that are untapped, which is awesome. Um, Command Tower will not tap for colorless, and Irrigated Farmland does have the utility to cycle if we want. So that is the deck. If um, if you have any comments or whatever, you can uh, you can tweet to me at exo the mage. Uh, I will put a Twitter link annotation on here on this last screen if I remember to do so. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just look it up. Um, and so. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was my first time actually making one of these things. I had a lot of fun. Um, I'm eager to hear feedback. And thank you.